Hello folks. Well, we're two weeks out from my next Backyard Ultra and I've been asked by quite a few people about the type of gear I need when it comes to running those loops every hour on the hour. Well, I'm here today to talk you through the basic needs that you're going to need for base camp. So let's go take a look and see what I suggest. So the first thing you're going to need is a tent and typically most people use one of these 10 by 10 tents. Now, this one hasn't got any sides at the moment. What we tend to do is use tarps and that helps to protect you from the elements such as the rain, the wind or the intense sunshine such as on a day like today. Now, people have used pop-up tents before now, but believe you me, having used one of those during a 24-hour event, they can get a little bit awkward when you have to crawl in as the race progresses and those cramps start to set in. The next thing you're gonna need is a chair. Now, we've just brought this one today for demonstration purposes, but in general, what people do is that they use those gravity chairs and that's so that they can recline put the feet up and if they need to catch that quick five or ten minute sleep in between each lap they can at least relax and try and do that. The good thing about this particular one is you've got this extra area here where you can put drinks or food whilst you're sitting down and getting prepared for that next lap. Now I've done backyard ultras when the weather has been red hot and I've also done it when it's been pouring with rain and things have got really chilly. So one of the other things you might like to consider is a good blanket because overnight it can get quite chilly. Now, in addition to that blanket, you might also want to consider a heater. Now, we've got this little buddy heater, but some people do use propane fire pits. And these are perfect not only for the runners, but also for your crew members whilst they're waiting around for you to finish each loop. And of course, if you end up running on one of those hotter days, you might want to consider a way of keeping yourself cool. And these sprayers are absolutely great for spraying things down and keeping you cool. Now the race organisers will very likely provide you with water, but I do like to take my own water simply because you may be short on time when you finish each loop and you want to have a quick way of accessing the drink before you head out on the next one. So I do tend to bring this larger bottle, but sometimes we'll, we'll supplement it with a little smaller one as well. I also use this little thing. Um, this is what I make up my energy drinks in. Um, this keeps it separate from the water so I don't end up mistaking one for the other. Um, I bring this little cup with me because sometimes if I'm short on time, I'll just scoop the drink out, have a quick swig, and then off I go for my next lap. You might want to consider bringing a handheld too, again, due to those time limitations. If you don't get a chance to drink here at base camp, you can at least take this out on the course with you and make sure that you're getting that fuel that you require. Now, you're not going to want to be crawling around in the tent trying to find things, so you will need to bring a table. Now, you can get these from Costco or Home Depot, one of those decorators ones or something, and they are quite large and sturdy and you can fit a lot of stuff on them. However, you may want to consider something with a smaller footprint, and we tend to use this one simply because it's a lot smaller and it doesn't take up quite as much space in the tent. This one we use for putting the food on because it's a soft table. We've got this one here, which is more solid, and that's where we tend to put our cooking equipment because, of course, you're going to be wanting to eat some food for however many hours you're out there. These races can go on for like 48 or even 72 hours, so you need to be prepared. Now, obviously, for the cooking, you're going to need a stove, and we tend to use just this single burner because everything that I tend to eat just needs water adding to it, and it's easy to just boil up a pan of water. You can get double burner stoves. What you use is entirely up to you and it depends on your needs on the day. And of course, with your cooking, you need to make sure that you bring that cutlery, pots, pans, plates, cups, whatever. So at least you've got something to serve that food on and obviously eat it. So this is for hot food. On a day such as today, you're going to need cold food or you might need a bag of ice. So you might want to consider bringing a cooler. Now, these are pretty cheap, these polystyrene ones. You can get these from Costco or those Home Depot kind of places. Really, really good, plenty of space. And of course, they're really light for transporting things around. A couple of other things that you might want to consider. You are going to be running through the night. So it's important that both yourself and your crew are able to see. So it's important that you both have a head torch. There may not be electricity at your particular venue, but these magnetic torches are really useful and they'll be able to light up your entire tent instead of just relying on one of these to find things in the dark. 
You might also want to consider one of these battery packs for recharging things such as your Garmin or your Sunto or whatever watch you want to use. If you use your phone or you want to call home in between laps, you might want to charge your telephone or something, your cell phone. Um, so we tend to take these with us. These are really, really good and extremely useful at these kind of events. One of the other things you might find useful is having one of these LED armbands. And this will help your crew to see you when you're coming through in the dark and make sure that they've got everything ready for you. Now, during a backyard orgy, you may need medical attention. So I always make sure that I bring a first aid kit. Now, I tend to keep all my medical supplies in this one box so that it's all well organized. And in there, you're going to find things like painkillers. You're going to find salt tablets, anti-chafing cream, tums and even sunscreen because on a day like this it's going to burn. I also take one of these with me and this is one of those little hand massages that you just roll on your legs when that tightness starts to set in when you've been going for hours and doing you've done more than a few laps. The percussive massager I take with me too. This is really useful for crew members to use on you if you've got a little bit more time between laps. And again, this really does work on that tightness in your legs, your glutes, or wherever you've got those problems. Now, it goes without saying that your crew is vital to making your race a success. So you need to make sure that they are catered for as well. Maybe bring along some speakers so that they can have some low profile music playing in the background, making sure that they stay warm and dry depending on the weather. And of course, making sure that they've got enough food and drink to keep them going for however many hours you're out there. For me, the principles of base camp are making sure that you're as self-contained as possible so that you're not as reliant on the event organizers and also making sure that you're well organized and that you utilize that space. The world record for the Backyard Ultra stands at around 90 hours. It could be you that's going for that 91 hours. Well, there are my key requirements for base camp at a Backyard Ultra. And I hope that you found it useful and that you might consider using some of these things yourselves. If you've got any other suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. But otherwise, I shall see you all again next time. And wish me the very best of luck at Big's Backyard Ultra World Championships in just two weeks' time. Mm -hmm.